It is another Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Tyler Rowland from the Locked On Titans Podcast. We have my co-host here, Alex Clancy from the Locked On Cardinals Podcast, breaking down all of the craziest news that have been going on in the NFL in the last 24 hours. Where will Deshaun Watson end up? Where will Baker Mayfield, who's throwing a temper tantrum, end up? And then some proposed overtime rules. We'll see which side of the coin me and Alex fall on on what the NFL should do going forward. So all of that and much more on a Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. Let's roll. You are Locked On NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. NFL fans, we are back for another Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. Once again, I am Tyler Rowland, host of Locked On Titans with Alex Clancy, host of Locked On Cardinals, breaking down all the biggest stories in the NFL and Right now, the biggest stories in the NFL are certainly about quarterback movement. We're going to get into the two biggest stories on that note in today's show. Before we do, I want to thank you guys for making the Locked On NFL Podcast your first listen every day. Make sure that you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. You're going to find the Locked On NFL Podcast there. Every platform Always free, but let's dive into these news stories. Number one, the biggest story in the NFL right now is Deshaun Watson. He's having a bunch of meetings with different teams at this point. The meetings are up to four teams, the Carolina Panthers, the New Orleans Saints, the Atlanta Falcons, the Cleveland Browns. That has caused a ton of controversy around the NFL, but what it comes down to is Deshaun Watson will be traded soon. Heck, it could even happen by the time that you are listening to this show, but uh, Alex, just your perspective right now, it seems like New Orleans is the front runner, although there's some question as to what they could give up. Where do you think is the best fit for Deshaun Watson, and where do you think he ultimately ends up choosing to play? I mean, it's wild that everybody's just like, you know what, I'll give it three first-round picks. We don't know what's going to happen with the civil suits. We don't know what's going to happen suspension-wise. We don't know anything yet. Right. But this is how important a franchise quarterback is, where you just kind of say, you know what, it's not a perfect situation, but no criminal charges, giddy up. Um, where I think the perfect fit would be, I mean, probably New Orleans, but like, you know, there's another, like, an, an, I don't know why Cleveland gets poo-pooed so much. Right. Like you have a great offensive line when healthy, you have two top 14 running backs in the league, Kareem Hunt being the lower of Nick Chubb. You've got a good defense. And Deshaun Watson would make any receiver good. So I don't understand, like, where it's just kind of been like, no, nope, Baker couldn't do it. So Deshaun, like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, I, I feel like Cleveland, if you can do it in Cincinnati, you can do it in Cleveland. But I still think, you know, New Orleans is probably the right fit, even though an interest with Atlanta coming in late to the party, like, if Calvin Ridley were still there, if none of that stuff happened with him, like, the gambling stuff, like, the mental health stuff, if he yeah. were to come back, if he were there and I'm Deshaun sense. Watson, I'm going to Atlanta. But I feel like at this point with Michael Thomas, Marcos Galloway, uh, you know, Alvin Kamara, and then Cam Jordan, et cetera, on defense, I think New Orleans is the choice. Yeah, I, I, I think I think that's probably the right call as well. And they're the front runner for the for a reason. If they bring back Teron Armstead, they still have a very, very good offensive line. Alvin Kamara, they still have Michael Thomas as well. So they do have a lot of good weapons. Of course, they have pieces on defense, signing Marcus May and letting Marcus Williams go. But I, I do think I just want to piggyback off what you said about Cleveland. Cleveland has a good offensive coach. They have good offensive line play. They've added Amari Cooper. They have the ability to add another wide receiver early in the draft, like a Garrett Wilson or Drake London or a Traylon Burke, someone along those lines. Uh, They still have really good pieces on defense with Miles Garrett and Denzel Ward. I mean, Cleveland really does have a, a lot that you could look at and say, hey, that's a pretty good team. So I think they're right there with New Orleans as kind of the best opportunity. But Deshaun Watson has said, He likes living in the South. He likes playing in the South. He's not a guy who really likes cold weather. That's a tough division now with Joe Burrow and 
you know, Baltimore is going to be back and play good football as they always do. So I think going to the NFC South right now, even with Tom Brady back, would still give Deshaun Watson the best chance to make a Super Bowl run. And we've talked so much about the AFC and all the upgrading AFC teams have done. Well, Watson going over to the NFC improves his chances to win as well, not just being in the NFC South. So I do agree with you. I think that New Orleans is the pick. I think that's the best fit for him. But Cleveland really is the most realistic dark horse to me. I don't want to go to Carolina where their offensive line is in shambles and Matt Rule is somebody who we don't know if we can trust. You definitely don't want to go to Atlanta. They may have the worst roster in the NFL, and if they're giving up more assets to get Watson, well, that could just get really dangerous really, really quickly for Atlanta. I do want to say that I personally think that the Cleveland stuff and the Atlanta stuff, well, the let's say the Atlanta stuff and the San Francisco buzz that happened all of a sudden late on Tuesday night, I think that is Deshaun Watson has a no trade clause and he wants to go where he wants to go. But the Texans aren't going to agree to send him wherever he wants to go if they don't get good compensation. So I think Deshaun Watson's representation drummed up the rumors about Atlanta and the meeting with Atlanta uh, because Deshaun Watson does have a good personal relationship with Arthur Blank, the owner of the Falcons. I think that the San Francisco rumors that came out and then were debunked, and then I think the Atlanta situation is Deshaun Watson's agent and his people trying to create a situation for leverage to get New Orleans to pony up a little bit more so that Deshaun can go where he wants to go and the Texans are satisfied as well. You think that Houston is insane for saying they want three first-round picks? Like, do you think that they need to read the room a little bit more? Um, well, I think I think ultimately what it comes down to is what do you think about Deshaun Watson? And I am excessively high on Deshaun Watson. He's a top I think he's a quarterback. A, There's no I, yeah, question and, about and it, right? Young, He's young still. I mean, if Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes went on the trade market, would it be crazy to ask for three first-round picks? I don't think so. And quite honestly, I think Deshaun Watson is right there with those guys. So I don't think it's insane. But at the end of the day, you got to take the best offer that's presented to you, whether it's three or two. But either way, we're going to talk about another quarterback who we expect to see be on the move, and it's a domino that fell. After this Deshaun Watson conversation, we'll be talking about Baker Mayfield and his trade prospects. Before we get into that, though, do want to tell you guys about BetOnline.net. It's that time of year again. College basketball's tournament is finally upon us, tipping off today for all the latest odds, contests, and player props. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and information. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to their website today. Or use your mobile device to learn more about all the trends and all the action. Bet online where the game starts. Second segment locked on NFL Thursday. Kyler Rowland at Tic Tac Titans on Twitter. Me, I'm Clancy's Corner, um, or I'm Alex Clancy at Clancy's Corner. Uh, you can check me out for Cardinals news. Check Tyler out. For everything, um, Tennessee Titans, a Julio Jonesless Tennessee Titans. Right. Um, man, I feel like he's going to be an Arizona Cardinal next. I, I just got a weird. It's a, it's a Steve Kime thing. Uh, we will keep you on the pulse he's with the that. AJ Green, for the, the locked on. Yeah, I think know. they should bring them both back. I think they should bring AJ Green back also. I don't know why people are people are insane. He had 800 yards receiving. DeAndre Hopkins was out half the year. He had three touchdowns. People just keep thinking about the Green Bay game. It's ridiculous. Uh, thank you for making Locked On NFL your first listen. Um, Listen, it's free and available on all platforms also. You know, have, there's no paywalls, no nothing. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, we go from one quarterback to another. I think somebody would be insane to give three first-round picks for Deshaun Watson with how much uncertainty there is. I just do. I just do. I Even though he's great. I don't see any uncertainty. I don't see any uncertainty. As long as he doesn't get charged criminal charges and he's not going to jail, I don't care how much money he pays uh, 22 women in court. His bank account doesn't have anything yeah, to do with Yeah, but what about the optics? Money. What about the optics? Hey, you know, the the optics only matter if you don't win. Let's be honest. Yeah, every uh, Saints fan in the world could, hey, he's a sexual predator, he's blah, blah, blah. But if they go out with Deshaun Watson and make it to the playoffs and win a Super Bowl, is anybody going to care? No, that's just the sad reality of the NFL. The NFL suspension, and if they decide to suspend him for anything, 
I, I will concede that you're right there. If there's any kind of NFL suspension that's going to happen, then yes, you, that is something that you have to worry about. But I personally don't think there's going to be one because this is such a murky situation and so hard to prove that he did anything wrong. I, I mean, it's just hard to prove that without going off hearsay or whatever. And if it's thrown out criminally and they say we're not even going to charge you with anything... I think it's going to be hard for the NFL to come back in and give him any kind of suspension without definitive proof. Because if I'm Watson, I'm going to I'm going to sue the NFL and say I didn't do anything. They threw the charges out. You know, did Ben? How much did Ben Roethlisberger get suspended? What was it? Four games? Did he get suspended? Uh, yeah, I don't remember. Over 15 years ago, I I, I don't know. So I I just don't think there's as much risk and uncertainty as maybe some people are saying. Really, it comes down to morally. Are you okay with what you've heard about what Watson has done as an organization? And as we've seen, man, a lot of NFL teams don't care morally about what these players have done. They just want people who are productive on the field. But either way, that domino has has led to to this domino yeah. of Baker Mayfield probably being out of Cleveland. That's what it seems like right now. Yeah, and the interesting part about it, like I how many points does he get? on the leadership scale for playing injured a lot. Like, I feel like, like he played with one arm for like the amount of hits that he took when the, the offensive line kind of went down in shambles because of injuries and otherwise, like he doesn't get any credit. So many quarterbacks get credit for playing hurt. Baker Mayfield continues to get bashed. I know he's a good actor. Okay. Yeah. I know he does a yeah. lot of commercials. That's not the first time that happened. I would He'll take Baker Mayfield. Sure. I would take Baker Mayfield as a leader over a handful of guys, if not more in the NFL, that are currently the quarterbacks of NFL teams. Like, he's not perfect. He's not an a, he, he's not a QB1. He's not. He wasn't garnered the first over. Like, that draft class was terrible, okay? Yeah. You had yeah, Lamar yeah, Jackson. Yeah. I, I get that. I get Josh Allen. Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen were the two that nobody thought should be high in that draft. So everybody was fooled. And Baker Mayfield was minus 500, like, the day before the draft. That came yeah, out of like nowhere. Me. That came out of Arnold. nowhere. Okay. Right. So do I think Indy be a good spot for him? Absolutely. That's my number one spot for Baker Mayfield. You know why? Because mm -hmm. I trust him more to at least throw the ball away more than Carson Wentz. I trust Baker Mayfield to be a better locker room guy than Carson Wentz. I trust Baker Mayfield to be at least as good as what Carson Wentz was for them last year. And I feel like there's going to be no drama with Baker Mayfield. He's going to well, come in. He's going to prove himself. The drama is on the outside. The drama is on the outside. He doesn't – like, what did he say about Duke Johnson? Like, either you're with us or you're not. I don't think that's I'm a gonna, bad thing to I'm say. I'm going to go into that. My, my, my counter to you is that there is more drama inside with Baker Mayfield than maybe even we realize. On ESPN Today, Chris Mortens had said that either way, whether the Browns get Watson or not, they're breaking up with Baker Mayfield because they want, quote, unquote, an adult in the quarterback so room. Stupid. So stupid. Uh, you, have, you have the beef with, you know, what seems like a little bit of a beef with Jarvis Landry. You have the Odell Beckham situation. Now, Odell's a diva of his own, so I'm not going to crush Baker for that. You have the Duke Johnson situation where Baker said either you're on the trade or, or you're on the train or you're not. Duke Johnson posted on Twitter on Wednesday after Baker Mayfield's news a, a wrecked train. So I think there are a lot of people within the locker room who don't like Baker Mayfield and his antics and his over-the-top bravado. The scapegoat. Um, so I think he's better than Carson Wentz, and he's more mature and a better leader than Carson Wentz. But I still don't think that he's a good leader. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is a better leader in the locker room than Baker Mayfield. But talent-wise, yeah, I don't think it would be a big drop-off going from Carson Wentz to Baker Mayfield. I honestly like Baker a little bit better. Um, so I don't think that the Colts would, would be tremendously worse or anything. I think they'd be a tad bit better than Baker. But I don't know that it's... I don't know that Baker Mayfield on the Colts makes the Colts significantly better, and I don't think that it significantly solves the leadership void for quarterback in the Colts locker room either. So I do th I do agree with you. I think the Colts would be the best des destination for Baker, Jimmy G to Cleveland, Baker Mayfield to Indy. I, I think that makes a ton of sense, but... And I agree with you, too. I feel bad here because I agree with you. Baker Mayfield's being scapegoated. He played severely injured last year. 
and he toughed it out for his team when he could have got surgery halfway through the year. And in response, they treat him like a dog. You know, I, I dog, that's funny, dog pound, no pun intended. But, like, I, I actually agree with most of what you're saying, except for Baker Mayfield being a better leader. I think he looks like a better leader, and he knows how to present himself as this big-time leader. But I think in the locker room, in the organization, there's less satisfaction with him than maybe he presents to yeah, us maybe. Maybe. I mean, and I think the word that I use, that I hate using cliches, but I use them one at a time. He's a gamer. He's a gamer. Right, right. When he right. plays. Cliches He's a gamer. For a reason. Yeah, I know, but it's lazy. It is lazy. <laughs> um, Alex Clancy, lazy is right. Stop yelling at me on a Thursday. Alex Lancy, Tyler Rowland. Follow him at Tic Tac Titans. Everything Tennessee Titans for Tyler Rowland. And follow me at Clancy's Corner. You can check me out, Locked on Cardinals, Monday through Friday. Please subscribe to the Locked on NFL YouTube channel. Um, we're doing this every day, man. Different hosts around the Locked On NFL, just bringing you national news aside from what we normally talk about on a daily basis. Tyler and I, we like to get creative with our segments. And this time, we had something drop right into our flipping laps. Overtime requests... Requests for rule changes brought to you by a couple teams, the Eagles... Tyler Rowland's own Tennessee Titans. Um, these are fun, and they're good, and they're good. Yeah. We're going to talk about both of those next so you can get your thoughts on what we think about the new uh, overtime rule requests, as I'll call them, um, instead of proposals. First, there's nothing you need to request differently than rockauto.com. Okay, Rockauto.com is – so here's the thing. So – you go to a chain storefront place and you're like, hey, man, uh, or ma'am, can I have this part? Oh, sorry, we don't have it. Um, oh, wait, and it's also 40% more than what I get at rockauto.com? Exactly. You could do it in your jammies, man. Go to rockauto.com. The price is always reliably low. They're a family-owned business. They treat you like family. They've been online for 20 years. Um, they don't have supply chain issues at times. They've got everything you need at all times. You go, you search, paint, or, you know, tail lamps or whatever for your make and model a couple days later, boom doorstep. That's all you need to do. You don't get upcharged 40, 50, 60% for, you know, you know, for keeping things on the shelf. Like you would have the chain storefront, as I mentioned, plus there's no awkwardness. If you don't know anything about cars like me, you can just do it from the comfort of your home, from your own home and your onesie go to rockauto.com. Right, locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. Hit it. All right, NFL fans, we are going to cap off this Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL podcast talking about some potential overtime rule changes. We are going to dive into two different proposals that were put out there today before we do. I want to thank you guys for making the Locked On NFL podcast your first listen every day. Make sure that you guys check out the Locked On NFL draft podcast with your second listen. You got Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker breaking down the draft for you every Monday through Friday. They're not only giving you the analysis you want on the prospects, they're also looking at things from a front office perspective so you get the best of both worlds when it comes to draft analysis. Check out the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast free and available wherever you get your podcast. But we got a uh, word of two different overtime rule change proposals on Wednesday. One proposal coming from the Indianapolis Colts and the Philadelphia Eagles is essentially allow both teams an opportunity to possess the ball in overtime. So that's number one. Both teams get a chance at the ball no matter what. The Tennessee Titans countered in with a different proposal saying that both teams should have an opportunity to possess the ball in overtime unless, unless the team that gets the ball first goes down, scores a touchdown, and gets a two-point conversion. So that's an added wrinkle that I haven't seen a lot of people to dis uh, discuss. A lot of people have been wanting the first proposed rule where both teams just get a chance at the ball in overtime. Uh, I like the Titans' little wrinkle there. Alex, which one of those rules do you like the most? Do you have any uh, comments on the you know how it would work out? What, what are your thoughts? Give me more two-point conversions. 
Now, like I, I think that the Titan ones, the Titans won. If we're gonna be silly and not give up the team, I understand that there's 22 starters on an NFL roster. I understand that. Okay, I understand that the we'll stop them is a reason for only giving. Yes, that's the one. Two point conversion. If you want to go win the game, which ha- would like which would happen. Every single time, there is no way that a team is going to score a touchdown, have a chance to lose, a chance to win the game, and not go for two. Like it's going to happen every time. Well, now let me just say this: What if the team goes for two, doesn't get it, then the other team gets the ball, and all they got to do is kick an extra point, and they win seven to six in overtime? Yeah. I mean, it's fascinating. It's a calculated risk. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna call an audible here. And hopefully I can talk long enough for you to come up with your own rule for overtime to change it. Because I have one, and I'm going to use it now. You talk a lot about football. I'm sure you've got one in the canister that we can talk about. We did not talk about this before recording the podcast. Mine is, if you want to keep it, whoever scores a touchdown first wins. If, or whatever. first touch, like You only get the ball if the first team doesn't score a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Then give the ball to the team who scored, who didn't score last to tie the game. There's no rational reason why a team that kicks a field goal to tie a game to go into overtime should get the ball again. Just go the opposite possession like you do in any game. It's an extension of the game, right? So why are we flipping coinsies instead of saying, you know what? You kick the field goal, Miami, to tie the game. Atlanta gets the ball to start overtime. That's fair. There's no reason why a team should go defense, defense. Never. Right. Or offense, offense, for that matter. Boom. Wow. I I, I think that's a pretty fantastic proposal, quite Thank frankly. You. It does it does make a lot of sense. I, I guess for me, I mean, there's only so many things that, that you could come up with here to, to try to fix the problem. I think that rather than... Um, they could do it this way. And this satisfies the defense. It satisfies the offense. Just get the ball at the 25-yard line. Not like college. Not the nearest 25-yard line. 75 yards away. And whichever team gets the further... Like, if, if neither team scores, whichever team got further down the field wins. Mm. Or, you know, d- measure it that way so that there's not a normal game being played. It's just, hey, you got one drive from the 25-yard line Go as far as you possibly can and see how far you get. If you get a field goal, you get a field goal. If you get a touchdown, you get a touchdown, whatever it is. And then the, ne- the next team, they get they get a chance. So it's not like the game is over. If somebody scores, you still get an opportunity. But if your defense is able to hold them to even less yards than what the offense got, you still have a chance to win there. And that way the game isn't going on forever either because the reality is football can't be like basketball where they just keep going over and over and over because it becomes a safety issue because it's just a much more violent game. So I, I'm not going to sit here and say that that idea is better, is the best one out of any of these four. It might be the worst, but just something to consider, I guess, going forward. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it, 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 I like that their conversation is still being had because there are – you know, 30%, 40% truthers out there that are like, no, keep it as is. Play defense. And then all you have to do is kick a field goal. This is such an offensive-centric game. Every day, it gets yeah. more and more offensive-centric. At least defensive players are getting paid a lot more money now than they were in the past, and it wasn't just all offense. So that's evening out. But if you're going to do, if you score a touchdown, the game is over. You're getting behind the times. I just don't, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. So any of this, the fact that there are conversations is a good thing because it's still malleable. It's still amoeba. Like people are still talking about it. It's not set it and forget it. And there's no way it's ever going to be changed. Well, one, one thing is too, defensive players are significantly more tired at the end of the game due to the snap counts than the offensive players typically are because defensive players are reacting to what offensive players are doing. It's just like when offenses go up-tempo and they go no huddle, we always talk about how that wears out a defense. And people don't talk about how it wears out the offense because there's a bigger impact on the defense to play more snaps than there is the off- defense is more taxing. So defenders are more tired at the end of games. So it's not, it's not fair 
to treat it like the opening of a game when the defenders are super tired. Obviously, the offense is going to have an advantage that late into the game. But we will see if the NFL decides to adopt any of these changes. I truly think that they'll decide to do something and test it out this year. But either way, that's going to do it for us here on this Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. So much is happening right now in the NFL. Who knows what news will break later on tonight after this is recorded in the morning. Who knows? Either way, you know that we will be here to break it down for you Monday through Friday on the Locked On NFL Podcast. That's going to do it for me today. Tyler Rowland, co-host Alex Clancy, and we will catch you guys next week.